Welcome to the first week of Intro to Game Studies, Theory and Design. This course covers foundational knowledge and skills in both creating games and also analyzing them through various conceptual lenses. While this is a CET course, it is also designed to be of wider interest to SFU students from other departments, since it is listed as a general breadth elective that anyone in the university can take. The course is therefore designed to be relevant and useful to both CET and non CET students. Because games as a medium have become of such widespread social and cultural importance, the course includes wide-ranging discussions on topics such as the philosophy and psychology of games, like why do we even play games in the first place? What drives us towards obeying rules that we don't have to in real life? And we also get into the granular weeds of actually making games. The course structure is very straightforward. There's one main project, three quizzes, and a short research essay. One feature of the course that may be a bit different from other courses, especially project-based ones, is that the main project of the course is due in week eight. This is because with most courses, the final project is due at the end of the semester, and students often say that it can be very stressful to have so many major projects due all at the same time across all their courses when the semester is ending. So I have decided to make the highest point count project, which is also a team project, due in week eight which hopefully should take a load off your end of semester project planning. This is also the only team project in the course, and the rest are individually assessed. As you will see from the Canvas assignment section, your major team project is to design a pre-production prototype of a board game, which are also called tabletop games. I use these two terms more or less interchangeably in the courseware. As is stated in the assignment description, what is meant by a pre-production prototype is a playable board game that doesn't have to be in such good shape that it is shippable, meaning ready to package, distribute, and sell. Though it could be, in the sense that there is the format of print-to-play games, where all the main game components can be downloaded and printed out in a ready-to-play at-home manner. Board games are something I think that everyone can relate to, and they are not very technical artifacts to make in the way that digital computer-based video games are. So this assignment is designed to be approachable and fun and interesting, for non CET students as well. If you're not a CET student, when you hear me say CET, I mean the School of Interactive Arts and Technology based at SFU's Surrey campus. Believe it or not, there are many people at SFU who have never heard of CET, even in the top administration offices at Strand Hall. So if it is a new acronym for you, that's what it means. As you will see in the course materials, a game prototype can be very basic, consisting of just some colored paper, markers, and scissors where you quickly try out some ideas. Instead of that kind of prototype, the main team project due in week eight is asking for a much higher quality prototype that is as close to production ready as your team can get it. Whether you choose to also distribute it as a print-to-play game is entirely up to you. Also, the board game project can potentially work as a prototype for any digital video game you might make in a future game design course since there is also the genre of digital board games. If you like the board game you create a lot, you might also consider pitching it to a game publisher, and the course material covers information on how to do that with game documentation, making pitches, and so on. And of course, if you simply want to use your board game project as a cool example in your portfolio when job hunting after graduation, it will be useful for that as well. I hope you will find this project to be a lot of fun, and of course, a great way to cement your learning. We assign the teams for the board game projects randomly, and the reasons for this are given in this week's lecture module on teamwork and problem solving. The general idea is to emulate professional workplace practices where people do not usually get to choose their teammates and instead have to work with the talents of everyone involved. I recommend that your team meets at least weekly, that you assign a team leader and a note taker at each meeting for good collaboration management purposes and that these team meetings over the next two months be a mix of in-person and remote video-based so that you get the group dynamics honed in the former and the scheduling flexibility of the latter. You should also keep minutes for your meetings to provide a record of what occurred during them, which is also part of the game project deliverables. All of the key game design foundation concepts are covered in the first five weeks of the course. You should take the sequence of topics as an indication of the kinds of things that your team should be working on approximately in sync with the topics. For instance, in week one, there is a discussion of ideation processes. So that strongly suggests that at your first team meeting, you should start doing some ideating around the concept of your game. 
Similarly, in week five, the discussion of balancing and tuning the quantitative aspects of your game, such as probabilities, suggests that you are already well into playtesting and should have a working prototype by that time. The topics in the first five weeks are sequenced in a step-by-step -step way that parallels the main considerations that make sense as you progress towards a finished board game project. The board game is due three weeks after the wrap-up of the general discussion of design principles, which gives you some flex time for completing the finishing details and tying together all of your team's ideas from the first two months of the course. Key concepts are recurrently reviewed and previewed throughout the course. For example, the concept of game mechanics is discussed in week one, but we also discuss mechanics a bit differently when we switch the focus to computer games, where mechanics are generated by various computational systems. And so the way they are discussed changes when we move to video games. Similarly, while we don't discuss chance in depth until week four, chance is a part of the Euro games discussion in week one. So you don't necessarily have to wait a month before deciding on how much a role you may want chance to play in your game. Since there is an ad drop period to any course at SFU, I do anticipate that some teams formed at the start of the course may undergo some variation, as perhaps some people decide to take another course instead, while folks who are on the wait list are let in. The TA and I will therefore likely have to do a few adjustments to some teams to manage any shifts in the enrollment. Additionally, there are three quizzes throughout the semester, each covering the previous four weeks of the lecture and reading material. So, for instance, quiz one is in week five, covering weeks one to four. Quiz two is in week nine, covering weeks five to eight, etc. The quizzes, by the way, are OBOW, which stands for Open Book, Open Web, and they are presented in a time-limited, multiple-choice format. The last assessment to mention is the final short paper due at the end of the course. You can choose any topic that you like, but it must explore your ideas within the constraint of focusing on a single video game. In week eight, I present some general ideas about writing formal research essays, which hopefully will just be a review for most of you, since presumably you have taken W writing courses at SFU already that have covered similar material. Also in week eight, I provide a large number of resources in the form of sample research articles under a range of headings that may be of interest to many of you. You're not limited to writing within these suggested topics. Rather, these resources are presented to be suggestive of the kinds of things you might find interesting to research and develop an argument around. There is no textbook for the course, but there are readings, usually PDFs or web-based. I also include plenty of short YouTube videos and even podcasts to round out the use of various sources that support each week's topics. Most of the courseware is based on Canvas pages with plenty of embedded media, such as videos, images, diagrams, etc. In general, the main focus of the course in the first half or so, especially in the first five weeks when we cover high-level game design principles, is on board games or topics that map very directly to the context of board games. Though it will happen now and then that some brief discussion of video games will also appear in this lecture material that is mainly focused on board games so as not to repeat some ideas later on in the course just because a new medium has been introduced. Starting around week six, the course starts to shift noticeably in its focus towards digital computer-based video games, to the point that by the end of the course, there won't be much discussion of board games at all. So there is a symmetry in the course content where it's basically board game focused in the first half and digital games focused in the second half, with periodic cross-referencing between these two gaming media in either half. There is also some occasional discussion of other kinds of games, such as sports or games children might play outdoors, but these are lightly touched on and are not really a focus of the course. The course is mostly Western in its material. I have to admit that as an English-speaking instructor in Canada. But there is material in the course on Indigenous, Asian, and other non-Western games that you should feel completely free to take up in your research essays or your main board game project. I have provided some resources to get you going down a non-Western research or creative path if that's something that interests you. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to email me or the TA directly. Otherwise, that's pretty much all I want to cover in this video. I hope you enjoy the course.